Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. And I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, a Massachusetts woman pleaded guilty to manslaughter in the death of her infant daughter in Aroostook County. Baby Jane Doe was found in a gravel pit 37 years ago. 58-year-old Leanne Daigle of Lowell, Massachusetts, was arrested last year after police cracked the case thanks to years of police work and advancements in DNA technology. Her name was Leanne Garrett at the time. Police were alerted to the grisly discovery on December 7th, 1985, after a dog dragged the newborn baby to a home in Frenchville. Detectives tracked the dog's path to a gravel pit where the baby had been born and abandoned in sub-zero temperatures. The death remained a mystery for decades until Daigle's indictment last year on a charge of murder. She'll be sentenced at a later date. Well, today, Maine's highest court heard arguments for the appeal of a man convicted of murder. Our Devin Dagnalt has the story. Monday morning, the Maine Supreme Judicial Court justices heard arguments for the case of Thomas Bonfanti. Last year, Bonfanti was found guilty of murder, aggravated murder, and elevated aggravated assault and sentenced to four consecutive life sentences. Recently, Bonfanti's case was granted an appeal. He is now being represented by attorney David Paris. We had limited questions on appeal. I think we dealt with them pretty well. I think the state has its own good argument. And again, uh, I would impress that the, that the uh, justices asked some very good, uh, compelling questions. And we'll see where they come uh, with the written decision. Paris argues this case isn't just about his client. He says it's about constitutional rights. Well, the arguments before the court and law court today really resolved around uh, Fifth Amendment rights, the right to remain silent, and the the right to not invoke self-incrimination. There was a public safety exception to that, but we argued that the invocation of the Fifth Amendment right went far beyond what was came in as the invocation of the public safety exception. Paris states that Bonfanti should be retried because when he was arrested, he invoked the Fifth Amendment, but officers continued to question him and information from that questioning was used in court. The attorney general's office argues there is no reason for a retrial due to the fact that the information was gathered from a line of questioning intended to locate and help Bonfanti's victims. They also argue there was so much evidence to incriminate Bonfanti that any information gathered after his invocation of the Fifth Amendment could be considered as supplemental. The Maine Supreme Court should have a written decision within the next 90 days. In Augusta, Devin Dagnall. ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. A proposed bill would raise the minimum wage for teachers over the next five years. Sponsored by Senator Teresa Purse of Cumberland, LD 1064 calls to raise the minimum salary for teachers throughout the state to $42,500 starting in 2024. Additionally, salaries for teachers would be increased by $2,500 every year until 2028. After that year, the wage increases would then be based off current salary multiplied by a cost of living adjustment. I think it's important to step back a little bit and uh, understand that over time we have been paying teacher, underpaying teachers just at a dramatically low level and it's time to really recognize that as a society. So they make far less than anyone else with, subs with the same amount of education and the same amount of work and we want to make sure that we recognize that. Pierce says if the bill reaches the Senate floor, she expects it will gain a lot of support. Meanwhile, a bill that would increase the notice period for certain rent increases is moving through the legislature. The bill would require a landlord to provide 75 days notice when increasing a tenant's rent by 10 percent or more over the previous year's rent. Current law only requires 45 days notice for increases of any amount. The bill's sponsor, Representative Chris Kessler of South Portland, said, quote, rising rents across Maine are significantly contributing to our housing crisis. The anxiety that comes with a rent increase only enhances the very real concerns that many Mainers will no longer be able to afford to live close to their workplace and family. This legislation will provide extra time for tenants to determine the next best steps in finding a place to rent, end quote. Dozens of volunteers from across the state gathered at the State House to support Senator Jill Dusan's bill ending the sale of flavored tobacco products. Our Matthew Jaroncic tells us more. Today I met a fifth grader who was talking about the kids 
vaping in his bathroom. Um, and at fifth grade, kids should never be exposed to chemicals and uh, tobacco and nicotine and then have an addiction for the rest of their lives. Supporters of ending the sale of flavored tobacco products took action on Thursday, encouraging legislators to do the right thing and pass the bill. The sale of tobacco, which is basically poison for people, and especially young people, shouldn't shouldn't be allowed. And if, if we can stop this um, flavored tobacco, which really hooks little kids, we want to be able to do that. Should this bill become law, it would end the sale of flavored tobacco products statewide. More than 50 teachers, students, and health officials gathered on the third floor of the State House explained the significance of banning these harmful products. Um, it's been exciting to see people here. I think that uh, it reinforces that this bill is about a, um, a grassroots effort uh, to do something about the availability of these products to our kids. Seeing Thursday's turnout, Senator Dusan says she believes this rally will likely strengthen the case in passing her bill. I think it'll certainly increase the, uh, the chances of getting this bill all the way over the hump. This time we expect to get it over the hump and uh, folks, uh, regular folks, are an important piece of making that happen and making this effort happen in our state. Dusan says the bill will be discussed at the end of the month. However, there is not a specific day at this moment. In Augusta, Matthew Juroncic reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Maine's Committee on Transportation held a public hearing today on a bill to eliminate certain motor vehicle inspections. The proposed bill, sponsored by Representative Chad Perkins of Dover Foxcroft, would put an end to required yearly inspections for passenger vehicles registered in the state. However, the bill would still require inspections for vehicles prior to being purchased, as well as commercial vehicles and fire trucks. Representative Perkins argues it's not necessary to have a vehicle inspected each year. During the hearing, Maine Policy Institute Director of Communications Jacob Posick testified in support of the bill. Most accidents are caused by speeding, distracted driving, or drug or alcohol use. Yet the program persists in Maine and saps Mainers of millions every year for no clear or quantifiable health and safety benefit. The bill will be worked on in the Transportation Committee's next workshop session. All right, and as we once again turn our attention to the outdoors, uh, really just a, a decent day today. And, and earlier, we got a look ahead mm -hmm. at what's to come, and uh, it, all things are pointing in the right direction weather-wise. Without giving too much away, but let's take <laughs> a, a first look at our forecast and see what we can expect just in the coming hours. All right, Beth, thank you. Happy Thursday. Your first weather is brought to you by Saliba's Rug Cleaners, Maine's largest for over 70 years. And let's talk about temperatures today. All right, so 51 here in Bangor will take it. 39 from Milnaket, that's cold. Uh, but warmer temperatures are just back off to our south and west and will make a run for us beginning as soon as tomorrow. Okay, so out there tonight, still a couple areas of light drizzle. There could be a couple of flurries in there, lots of cloud cover. This is not a big deal. It's going to end before sunrise tomorrow morning and then a very nice day tomorrow, albeit a bit breezy and windy, especially through the afternoon. Okay, our forecast then for tonight, though, is cloudy skies, some areas of drizzle, some light rain showers, and maybe a couple flurries with low temperatures in the 30s. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth? As overnights go, that's a beaut. Yeah, pretty yeah. nice indeed. <laughs> well, more on that to come and still to come on Fox 22 News at 10. The Bangor School Committee approves a budget for the coming fiscal year. We'll have the details. And a veteran officer with Portland Police comes out as transgender. We'll have we'll hear her story after the break. Life doesn't stop for diabetes. Be ready for every moment with Glucerna. It's the number one doctor recommended brand that's scientifically designed to help manage your blood sugar. Live every moment, Glucerna. Are you considering buying a new home? A home inspection is a major step in the home buying process. 
Knowing the current condition of your future home is very important. From simple DIY repairs to major issues that could cost thousands down the road. Not only can TJ inspect your property, but he is also a licensed contractor. Give him a call today at 210-5000 for a free inspection quote. When Cat Tracks in LaGrange wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Cat Tracks in LaGrange is your dealer for Hewitt Lifts and Rolodox with the goal to get you on the lake faster than anyone else. From the land to the sea, Chase's Family Restaurant is the place to be. Are you looking for a place to unwind after a long day? Then come check out our Hideaway Lounge. With a bar that's both upbeat and laid back. And it's the perfect atmosphere for anyone who wants to unwind after work. Or kick it up for the weekend with daily drink specials and a full dinner menu. You can fill up on a good time any night of the week. Thank you for being a part of our family. Here at Chase's Family Restaurant. After WrestleMania, the historic title reign continues for Roman Reigns. It's an all-new Friday Night SmackDown on Fox. Hello, I'm Emma Smith, and coming up on Good Morning Maine, we'll get updates from court, specifically regarding Leanne Daigle, the woman accused of abandoning her baby in a dirt pit back in the 1980s. Plus, oral arguments were heard in the trial of Thomas Bonfanti, who has been found guilty of a triple murder. These stories and more coming up on Good Morning Maine. Welcome back. Bangor's school committee has approved a budget for the coming fiscal year. The $56.5 million is more than 6% higher than the previous year. At this point, it's unclear how that will impact local taxes. According to the Bangor Daily News, the budget includes almost $900,000 more than was expected from the state. One of the biggest increases for the coming year is the cost to provide special education services. Well, a veteran officer in the Portland Police Department has, co has come out as her true self. Julie Fitzgerald says she's lived a lie for many years and is now proud to say she's transgender. Dan Lamparello explains the reaction she's received and how she hopes it will help others. For more than 20 years, Officer Julie Fitzgerald has patrolled the streets of Portland. It's a job she believes was her calling. I believe that's what path I was supposed to go. Fitzgerald joined law enforcement after retiring from the U.S. Air Force as an aircraft mechanic in the early 2000s, eager to make connections and continue public service. This is what I wanted to do when I got out because um, I enjoy helping people and, you know, getting that satisfaction. But getting that satisfaction hasn't always been easy. As you can see, she looks much different today than these photos from her past, something she spent much of her life trying to hide. I hid. I hid everything. I hid it through my 24 years in the Air Force, and I obviously hid it for 20 years here. Last October, Fitzgerald made what she calls the toughest decision of her life. I had to do it. Coming out as her true self, a woman. So I got to do this. I have to live my life. You know, I, I was I'm 62 years old and I'm living two lives. Why do I have to live that? But in a job like law enforcement, she wasn't sure how her fellow officers would react. I've never been scared in this job, but that was scary. Emotional and nervous. I had to tell whatever we have, 140 something people at different times. And, and the response I got was fabulous like people I didn't have to stop talking and people were just like you know most of them thought I was gonna tell them I had cancer but uh you know I was just like you know they were just well, you're, you're our brother we love you you know you're who cares it was a level of acceptance the department's chief says he wasn't at all surprised by Julie is part of the fabric of this department and so to see the acceptance from our officers was really incredible uh, and continues to be incredible you know, our goal is to support Julie as we just move forward. For Fitzgerald, that's all she was hoping for, respect for who she is. This doesn't change me, I'm the same person. A message she hopes will resonate with others in similar positions, especially at-risk youth who she often interacts with on patrol, that even in a job like hers, you can be yourself and be accepted. 
I am who I want to be, you know, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud of me and I'm proud of, again, I'm proud of being transgender. Wow. Just so courageous after all those years of bottling that up to be mm -hmm. able to come out and, and admit that to, you know, your fellow officers and then to have that acceptance and yeah. response must have been such a, a, a relief and uh, it's great to see. I can only imagine how, how terrifying it must have been not yeah. knowing what the reaction was going to be. Right. So it is really, really wonderful to hear that, you know, Julie's announcement or Julie, you know, Julie's message was received so well mm -hmm. and that her work is valued above and beyond anything else. You know, right. It's interesting. She said they were afraid I was going to tell them I had cancer. They didn't, you know, when I told them what the actual thing was, that they didn't care. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Really great to see that there. All right. Well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 in an unprecedented move, Tennessee Republican-led House, the Tennessee Republican-led House votes to expel two Democratic lawmakers after they protested for gun reform. And the FBI actively recruiting Russians as tensions with Moscow escalate, particularly over the invasion of Ukraine. We'll have those stories and much more when Fox 22 News continues. Looking to buy or sell a home? The more true team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the more true team a call today or visit their Facebook page. It's your journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Tucson with America's best warranty. Get 0% APR financing for 48 months on the 2023 Hyundai Tucson. Visit your local Hyundai dealer today. Why should your new floor come from Carpet One? Because we're passionate about the spaces our neighbors call home. We're part of your community, and we're also part of the world's largest cooperative of independently owned and operated flooring stores so you can be sure you'll get great selection and outstanding value with every installation. Whether it's carpet, hardwood, tile, or luxury vinyl, our experts take the guesswork out of choosing the right floor. We're your local Carpet One Floor and Home, the one store for your perfect floor. Take your taste buds on a journey and experience the brand new international menu Tuesday through Thursday only at the Lucerne Inn in Ryan's Pub. Every Tuesday, enjoy their delicious French cuisine. On Wednesdays, enjoy their memorable Italian delicacies. And every Thursday, be ready for a fiesta with their Mexican favorites. A full five-course dinner for just $29.95 per person. And don't forget about their all-you-can-eat seafood Fridays. The Lucerne Inn, beautiful dining with a delicious view. The Bristol Dirt Race. Eastern weekend on Fox. It's NASCAR on the dirt. Some of the steepest bank turns on the circuit. Covered in dirt on a half mile track. Under the lights in the prime time. Chaos will ensue. Who's going to save it? Holy cow. The NASCAR Cup Series. Bristol. Easter Sunday on Fox. Looking to buy or sell a home? The More True team of Better Homes and Gardens works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Give the ladies of the More True team a call today or visit their Facebook page. You're watching Fox 22 Bangor. It was a historic day in Tennessee politics. Republicans expelling two Democratic lawmakers, but not all of their efforts were successful. Fox's Jonathan Hunt reports. We need action. What began as a rally for gun control has now cut short the careers of two state lawmakers in Tennessee. The drama unfolded a week ago when a trio of Democrats joined a gun control protest on the floor of the state house. They used a bullhorn to join with protesters following the Nashville school shooting in which six people, including three nine-year-old children, were killed. The lawmakers' actions broke House rules of decorum and Republicans used their supermajority to try to oust all of them. He and two other representatives effectively conducted a mutiny on March the 30th of 2023 in this very chamber. 
Justin Jones is one of the so-called Tennessee Three. He was the first to be expelled. I will stand with the people out in this rotunda every week if I have to. They can't expel our movement. Representative Justin Pearson was also expelled. A lot of them I know are upset about the anti-democratic behavior of this white supremacist-led state legislature. But Gloria Johnson survived by just one vote. Protesters swarmed the Capitol when the votes took place. Expulsion is incredibly rare. It's only happened twice since the 1800s. The fact that this vote is happening is shocking, undemocratic, and without precedent. The expelled lawmakers are eligible to run again in a special election, which has to be held to fill the now open seats. In Los Angeles, Jonathan Hunt, Fox News. Meanwhile, another setback for former President Trump's legal team, this time in the special counsel's probe investigating the events leading up to January 6th. It comes in the wake of Mr. Trump appearing in court to respond to criminal charges in a separate case that we've heard a lot about in the last week. Fox's Griff Jenkins has the latest on why we could soon see the vice president testify and what could tee up a historic moment in the Justice Department's probe. Former Vice President Mike Pence says he will not appeal a judge's order compelling him to testify in the Justice Department's January 6th probe, despite his legal team challenging the subpoena. A spokesman for the former VP said in a statement, quote, Vice President Mike Pence swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution and his claim that the Biden special counsel's unprecedented subpoena was unconstitutional under the speech or debate clause was an important one made to preserve the separation of powers outlined by our founders. There's nothing illegal about a client or and a former president talking uh, with lawyers and then exploring ideas. That's not illegal. What's illegal is if they do something, you know, with the intention to violate the law. The announcement comes after a federal judge last week rejected executive privilege claims, ruling the former vice president is required to appear before a grand jury, a decision largely seen as another setback for former President Trump's legal team working to limit testimony to grand juries investigating him. This week, the former commander in chief pleaded not guilty to 34 counts during his arraignment in lower Manhattan. In general, I think Republicans have to play harder and they've got to be as intense as the Democrats are because this has just got to come to an end and the truth has to be revealed. Next week, we could see a run in between Mr. Trump and Mr. Pence. Both are headed to Indianapolis to headline the National Rifle Association's annual meeting. In Washington, Griff Jenkins, Fox News. Well, the 2024 election is still more than a year away, but candidates and those believed to be running are already trying to get out in front of voters. Fox's Lauren Blanchard is in Washington with more. Former President Donald Trump has been in headlines, drowning out other candidates running for president in 2024. This is 2016 all over again, where everybody pretends they can avert their gaze from Donald Trump, but he is the biggest issue out there. In a new letter, the Trump campaign is going after Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's donors, boasting about poll numbers and telling donors to, quote, demonstrate your support and join Team 47 early. Former President Trump Thursday picked up an endorsement from Florida Representative Byron Donalds, while DeSantis now has Kentucky Representative Thomas Massey behind his possible presidential run. Thursday, DeSantis is in Michigan. Our bottom line is we do not surrender to the woke mob. Florida's where woke goes to die. Other potential candidates are also testing the waters. Republican Senator Tim Scott just announced stops in New Hampshire and Iowa. And California Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom went to Florida. For Democrats, two have already announced, including Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who will formally launch his campaign later this month. Other party heavyweights are still waiting to see if President Biden will seek re-election. When asked to name someone who they would like to see as an alternative to Biden, Americans have a, a hard time articulating that. Democrats in particular, if not Joe Biden, then who? A Fox News poll shows President Biden is struggling with his job approval numbers, and most Americans are very concerned about the economy. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Meanwhile, the FBI is said to be actively recruiting Russians as tensions with that nation escalate, particularly over the invasion of Ukraine. 
Fox's David Spunt now with that story. The FBI openly recruiting Russians to give up important information. In a new video shared with millions around the globe on Twitter, Facebook and Google, bureau officials speak directly to Russian citizens, expatriates, even spies looking to break free. Do you want to change your future? The FBI values you. The FBI can help you, but only you have the power to take the first step. The ad campaign comes as Russia continues to wage war in Ukraine, more than a year after the initial invasion. U.S. officials say Vladimir Putin is as isolated as he's been since coming to power more than 20 years ago. It's a very tight, uh, clear message to any Russian who might be interested in volunteering uh, to the United States government. It's meant for Russian intelligence officers. And the message is repeated numerous times. Do you want to change your future in Russian? Sources familiar with the ad tell Fox News that the FBI asking Russians for help isn't new. The agency ran this still image ad last year with a photograph of Putin. But this year, the bureau decided a video was more effective. The ad encourages Russian people to also come speak in person to the FBI Washington field office and tell a security official that you have confidential information related to Russian intelligence or defense matters. The FBI Intelligence Division will contact you. But there are concerns about double agents. Officials within the FBI tell Fox News all information will be thoroughly screened. They just want to get as many tips as possible. In Washington, David Spunt, Fox News. Meanwhile, tensions increasing by the day between the United States and China. A U.S. congressional delegation is currently in Taiwan. This after a visit for Taiwan's president from a visit by Taiwan's president on Wednesday to the U.S. Fox's Aisha Hosni is in Taipei with the details. That is an act of aggression. House Foreign Affairs Chairman Michael McCall standing next to Taiwan's vice president as he calls out China for announcing it will stop and inspect ships in parts of the Taiwan Strait for three days. The same three days during which McCall is leading a bipartisan delegation through Taiwan. Hours before their plane even touched down in Taipei, Taiwan's defense ministry discovered three People's Liberation Army Navy ships encircling the island. McCall telling Fox China better think twice before escalating tensions further. We know that they they have certain plans. Uh, Whether they carry those out, I don't know. Uh, But I think that would be a a very uh, unfortunate mistake on the part of the Chinese Communist Party. What are those plans? Can you elaborate? I I can't explain. As China ramps up pressure on Taiwan, it's also flexing its economic muscle to push America to the side. The White House responding to Beijing's anti-U.S. deals on oil with Russia and Saudi Arabia, and China working with Brazil to move off the U.S. dollar. We know we're in a strategic competition with China, um, and we have made it clear to Chinese officials, we are unabashed and unafraid, uh, to make it clear to the Chinese that we're going to do what we have to do to protect our national security interests. And again, this is no time to be in partnership with Vladimir Putin. As life goes on in Taipei, there is a looming fear. War could be coming. If something happened, we would have to fight, right? Yeah, I'll go. You ready for that? Yes. What's still unclear, though, whether they'll get any help from U.S. troops. And Chairman McCall tells Fox that decision will be made by the American people. What this delegation is willing to talk about is weapons sales, and they will do that with President Tsai when she returns to Taiwan. In Taipei, I'm Aisha Hasni, Fox News. Militants in Lebanon fired a wave of rockets at Israel on Thursday. The attack comes just days after clashes at the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. Fox's Trey Yanks now has that story. Sirens ringing out across northern Israel on Thursday as dozens of rockets were fired from southern Lebanon. While many of them were intercepted by the country's missile defense systems, some did fall in Israeli territory. Wow! Israeli officials have blamed Hamas for this latest round of strikes, the violence drawing condemnation from the international community. We're very concerned about the violence there. We see now it increased more attacks uh, in the last 24 hours. Uh, we're deeply concerned about that. And we call on all sides to de-escalate, reduce the violence. Tensions in the region have been rising amid Passover celebrations and the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. In recent days, Palestinian militants in Gaza 
fired rockets toward Israel in response to clashes at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest site in Islam. Tuesday night, Israeli authorities tried removing Palestinians attempting to pray overnight. Police stormed the compound, firing tear gas and stun grenades. Palestinians set off fireworks and threw stones at Israeli police forces. This should be a time for peace and not violence. Places of worship should only be used for peaceful religious observances. Israeli officials say Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been receiving updates about the situation and was meeting with his security cabinet to decide how they will respond. Two years ago, similar clashes led to an 11-day war between Israel and Hamas. In Jerusalem, Trey Yankst, Fox News. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, there's a new push to ban certain food additives classified by the FDA as generally safe. And in sports, Brewer Boys Lacrosse won their first playoff game ever last year, and they just might have the tools to go further this year. We'll be right back. Saturday at 7.30 Eastern on Fox. Electrify Maine is Maine's number one electrical contractor, providing outstanding electrical services to businesses, industries, and homes throughout the state. Electrify Maine also sells and installs heat pumps and is a licensed Generac dealer. Call us today for a free estimate. You know, if one mattress was right for everybody, we wouldn't need to stock over 30 models. It doesn't exist. Our low price and sleep guarantees mean you won't pay too much for a great night's sleep. Purchase your new mattress before 3 p.m. and we'll deliver it the same day in the Bangor and Ellsworth area. Warehouse pricing, a great night's sleep guaranteed, same day delivery and free removal of your old. At Dorsey's, we've got your back. Sleep well, my friends. 911, what's your emergency? You ready? Ready to go, Cap. Monday's on Fox. There is an inescapable fact about this city. She's not breathing. That at any moment. Police, come out with your hands up. The whole place could burn. Ah! 911, all new Mondays on Fox or watch anytime on Hulu. Electrify Maine is Maine's number one electrical contractor, providing outstanding electrical services to businesses, industries, and homes throughout the state. Electrify Maine also sells and installs heat pumps and is a licensed Generac dealer. Call us today for a free estimate. Welcome back. If you take a look inside your pantry and fridge, you'll most likely find a variety of processed foods you and your family love to eat. But there's growing concern about the safety of some of the additives inside some processed foods. Fox's Ted Lindner now takes a closer look. Some processed foods are coming under fire over potential health concerns from the additives used to alter their taste, color, shelf life, and more. But to understand the current debate, we need to take a trip back to 1958 when the Food and Drug Administration created the GRASS list, which stands for Generally Recognized as Safe. On it are hundreds of additives that the FDA allows in food products. The GRASS list is saying, hey, we have used these additives for years. There's no problem. They're generally recognized as safe. You don't have to do any testing. Lawmakers in California, though, recently proposed legislation that would ban five additives on the list. Two of them are dyes. One is an oxidizing agent, one is an emulsifier, 
and one is a preservative. The reason? There are studies that show that some of these ingredients, even grassless ones, um, can cause harm, such as causing cancer. And some dietitians say the problem is worsening. The problem comes down to amount. Back in the 50s when the grass list first came out, most Americans in general made most of their own food. They weren't eating that much processed foods. So what can be done to keep people safe? Besides possible government restrictions, health experts say it comes down to people revamping their diets. Substituting 10% of foods, processed foods, with minimally processed foods decreased the risk of quite a number of cancers. If you eat a variety of foods, then you're not getting too much of one thing that might in fact be harmful. Ted Lindner, Fox News. Meanwhile, a much anticipated jobs report is due out Friday and economists and investors are reflecting on where the economy stands amid a lot of uncertainty with banks and jobless claims. Fox's Mike Emanuel takes a closer look. One of the country's biggest warehouse retailers is feeling the impact of inflation. Customers at Costco are making smaller purchases. The company reported its monthly same-store sales dropped for the first time in almost three years. Everything I'm seeing right now uh, pretty much is a declaration to me that uh, economic trouble lies ahead. Another troubling sign that's weighing on the economy, initial jobless claims in March came in higher than expected. The Labor Department found 228,000 Americans filed for unemployment benefits. Economists and investors are now looking toward Friday's jobs report to see whether it will prompt the Federal Reserve to keep hiking interest rates. I think the number one thing that the Fed should be looking at is inflation. That's the one they have any control over. They don't have control over the labor market or anything else. They've really got to focus on inflation, and inflation's still running pretty hot. Meanwhile, a top Fed official says further rate hikes are still on the table if the labor market remains strong. I think inflation is going to be sticky going forward, and it's going to be hard to get inflation back down to the 2% target. We're going to have to uh, stay at it in order to uh, apply pressure to make sure inflation gets back to 2%. The Federal Reserve could vote on another rate hike when it meets next month. In Washington, Mike Emanuel, Fox News. In other news, the music of the night is still raking in a whole lot of money. The Phantom of the Opera scoring big at Broadway's box office weeks ahead of its final performance in Midtown Manhattan. The Broadway League reporting the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical topped the chart grossing more than $3.2 million in the most recent weekly period. The show's total making up nearly 10% of Broadway's total take during the same period. The show also reporting the highest average ticket price at $248 and the highest premium ticket prices at $697. The Phantom of the Opera will take its final bow at the Majestic Theater Sunday, April 16th. And I have walked past that theater many times with the name of that show on the marquee. Well, Nashville music stars come together for a good cause. Jonah Hill recruits a major star for his next film and more. Here's Fox's Ashley Dvorkin with the latest from the Hollywood Nation. A family of ducks soar, maverick leads, and music stars raise funds in the Hollywood Nation. Country music stars and songwriters are uniting for a special night. Carrie Underwood, Thomas Rhett, Lady A, and Tyler Hubbard are among the Nashville-based artists set to perform during a night of joy celebrating the Covenant School. The benefit concert will honor the victims killed during the mass shooting on March 27th. It will be held at the Fisher Center at Belmont University on April 12th, with all proceeds going to the school. Pete Maverick Mitchell. The nominees for the 2023 MTV Movie and TV Awards have been announced. The blockbuster Top Gun Maverick, Netflix's sci-fi drama Stranger Things, and the HBO series The Last of Us all lead with six nominations each. Following close behind with four nods each is the Emmy-winning series The White Lotus and the hit Adams Family spinoff Wednesday. Drew Barrymore will host the ceremony live from Los Angeles May 7th. Keanu Reeves and Jonah Hill are teaming up for a new project at Apple TV+. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Apple Original Films has acquired the rights to Hill's upcoming dark comedy outcome. Reeves is in talks to play the lead alongside Hill, who will also direct, co-write, and co-produce. The film centers on a damaged Hollywood star confronting his inner demons. Here we go!
And Universal Pictures shared a first look at its upcoming animated film, Migration. It centers on a family of talking ducks who try to convince their overprotective father to go on a vacation of a lifetime in the Bahamas. The movie flies into theaters December 22nd. We're not going to make it, are we? In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. I love ducks. I'm definitely going to watch that. Yeah, it seems yeah. like a, a, just a great movie idea to begin yeah. with so uh, i i think i'm all for that it looks like a lot of fun the devil is always in the details from those you know apropos little one-liners and digs to right. you know the kind of the physicality of the animal and whether they nail that down mm-hmm. so i always love seeing a, a, a well-done movie like that i agree yeah yep. all right well uh, coming up next our full five-day forecast we hinted at some good things earlier yes indeed and we're hoping that uh, they continue to be on the horizon <laughs> we'll get those answers in just a moment A wide range of temperatures across the area today, but warmer 60s are in the five-day forecast for everyone. Those details for you when I come back. Up in Spoke Fireworks is family-owned with a huge selection including Brothers and Showtime, Time Bandit, and Black Hat brands. We will share our knowledge with you. Then go have a blast. Blast. Up in Spoke Fireworks, 173 West Main Street, Searsport. We've got your back, Road Warriors, because we know you're picking up the pace. Steering life at 10 and 2, you're hitting the road, and we are helping you get there with confidence. So skip the counter without missing a beat. Choose any car in the aisle and be the boss of you. Go national. Go like a pro. With Allegra, allergies don't hold us back. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. And unlike Zyrtec, it won't make us drowsy. Allegra gives you the fastest, non-drowsy, 24-hour allergy relief so you can live your greatness. Had enough? No, arthritis. Here, aspirin cream arthritis. Full prescription strength. Reduces inflammation. Thank the gods. Don't thank them too soon. Kick pain in the aspirin cream. Who's got a motive? Why am I the bad guy? Accused is TV's most captivating new crime show. Guilty as charged. This is a nightmare. And now you can watch it anytime. I just shot someone. I'm gonna fix this, I promise. Accused. All new Tuesdays on Fox and watch anytime on Hulu. Up in Spoke Fireworks is family owned with a huge selection including Brothers and Showtime, Time Bandit, and Black Hat brands. We will share our knowledge with you. Then go have a blast. blast. Up in Spoke Fireworks, 173 West Main Street, Searsport. Welcome to Fantasy Island. There is so much here for you. All you have to do is take it. Fantasy Island, this Monday on Fox. Here we go. Your full weather is brought to you by CNK Variety. Stop by CNK Variety in Herman today for hand tossed pizza, subs, salads, and more. CNK Variety, your local go to convenience store. Let's talk about temperatures. And here we are in the low 50s for a few of us today, but generally upper 30s in Millinocket, uh, mid 40s in Bar Harbor. Uh, we need some warmer temperatures, and they are in the five day forecast, but tomorrow temperatures look kind of like today. All right, so the wind right now is kind of changing direction. It's been out of the east, out of the south, out of the west. It's going to shift out of the west again for tomorrow and get rather windy across our region. In fact, here is a wind advisory west of the Millinocket area for tomorrow. We could see wind gusts here near 40 to 50 miles per hour. Of course, gale warnings are out there as well. Uh, So overall, be careful across the region. Tomorrow will be a very windy day once again with those gusty west-northwest winds. All right, so out there now, there's still lots of cloud cover and a couple of sprinkles, a couple of flurries, a couple of light rain showers. Not really a big deal, but kind of annoying, right? Uh, That will get out of here by early tomorrow morning. In fact, tomorrow is going to be a very nice day across our neck of the woods. And overall, uh, the systems we have going through the area recently, uh, we're going to put an end to them for a short time. We're going to keep things dry through the holiday weekend and probably into the early parts of next week. Uh, There is this guy over here well to the west that's not going to bug us probably until middle portions of next week. Okay, so tonight we still have a couple light 
light rain showers out there and some drizzle. Most of us will stay dry, but as you get the idea, there could be a sprinkle or a flurry or a light rain shower in the area tonight. And here's our snowpack. Again, a very healthy snowpack still. North and west of Bangor, more so Millinocket. The trick is now, with warmer temperatures on the way to stick around for a while, uh, we need to melt this slowly to avoid flooding. And it looks like we should do that overall, but still, we got to watch that snowpack north and west of the area. Otherwise, flooding will be a concern later on next week into the week after as the ground is still frozen in spots. You want to melt that snowpack kind of slowly to avoid flooding across our neck of the woods. All right, our forecast then for tonight, though, is some drizzle, some sprinkles, some flurries out there and press repeat. Look for a low temperature near 35 with a south wind's going to pick up tomorrow morning near 10 to 20. For tomorrow, here we go. So partly cloudy and windy tomorrow. Uh, wind advisory for the north and west. High temperatures a bit warmer than today. 47 across generally the entire region with a gusty west wind that could gust near 45 throughout the afternoon. And then looking ahead, your five-day forecast shows a story. 47 tomorrow, partly cloudy. Saturday, 42. Easter Sunday, 49. Almost 50 on Sunday. And then look, we're in the 60s Monday and Tuesday and keeping things dry probably until Tuesday night or Wednesday of next week. Beth? See, I see 60s and I'm like, okay, am I hallucinating? <laughs> yeah, I, right? I really just hear and see oh that? Oh my yeah. gosh, it is a sure sign of spring yeah. and and summer to come. I yeah. mean, it is, it's, it's exciting. Um, we've been having conversations on Newsroom yeah, all day about, for sure. you know, planned activities once the once the weather gets that warm. So mm -hmm. we're, we're really looking forward to it over here. We are indeed. Yeah. All righty, well, sports is coming up next. We're looking forward to that. Stay yeah. with us. Sure, the driveway looks good now with the snow on it, but you know what will still be under there in the spring? The same cracks, crumbles, and potholes that were there before winter. Call Eaton Paving today. Let's make an appointment to fix those problems when the weather is ready. Eaton Paving and Excavation. It wasn't just a little bit of soot on an old family photo. It wasn't just a couple of books soaked in water. And when you called Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, you were not just another customer. That family photo hangs high yet again, and those irreplaceable first editions stay cemented in history. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. We're lucky to live in Maine. We have a wealth of natural resources, hardworking people, and time for the things that matter. Mechanical Services is all about Maine, with energy efficiency that protects our environment and helps businesses grow. Preventive maintenance and energy solutions that save money. How Maine is that? Mechanical Services, where everywhere you are, in Maine. Did you know that cervical cancer can be prevented with regular screening? I was only 22, so I was pretty overwhelmed when my routine pap test showed precancerous cells. But a simple procedure took care of it, and I'm doing great now. A pap test identifies abnormal cells before they become cancerous. I'm so relieved. I will never skip my pap tests. If you're age 21 to 65, ask your provider about pap tests, or learn more at ScreenMaine.org. Sure, the driveway looks good now with the snow on it, but you know what will still be under there in the spring? The same cracks, crumbles, and potholes that were there before winter. Call Eaton Paving today. Let's make an appointment to fix those problems when the weather is ready. Eaton Paving and Excavation. Tonight Sports is brought to you by Engstrom's Auto Service in Guilford. We specialize in all foreign and domestic service and alignments. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's start with some lax. Brewer Boys Lacrosse is in just their fourth season as a program, and they're coming off of their best spring in history, winning their first playoff game ever. They're looking to build on that success heading into this year. Ryan Sudal has the story. It was a great step for our program, especially to show these younger kids like how the game is played and how we can bring it to this area. After being a program for just four years, Brewer Boys Lacrosse took home their first playoff win in history in last year's Class B state tournament. With us being somewhat of a new program, uh, as far as Northern Maine Lacrosse goes, first win always a good one. But that southern competition is stiff. The Witches lost their next game in the quarterfinal round against York 17-2. It makes us realize how good the teams down south are and it makes us 
get prepared throughout the year working in practices. You know, it's never fun to lose a game, especially as competitors. We want to strive to be better than what we were last year, and that's what we're going for. And they have the talent to do so. The Witches have most of last year's starting lineup returning, including the team's top goal scorer, senior captain Ryder Goodwin. Ryder is an amazing scorer, by far our best player, good passer. I mean, he's taken this program under his wing in the last couple of years. He's a dog. He's a guy we all look to when we need a goal in a big game. And it doesn't just end with the upperclassmen. We had some freshmen last year that played a lot, and they're sophomores now. I think experience is where we're at above other teams around us. All in all, the Witches look to improve on their 10-2 and regular season and eventually be able to show those teams down south what Northern Maine lacrosse is all about. Our goal is just to go undefeated and see how far we can make it, hopefully go farther than we did last year in the playoffs. We can beat up on a couple of Northern Maine teams all we want, but we want to walk down south and show them that we can hang, really. In Brewer, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. Thanks for that, Ryan. Opening day next Thursday, Brewer versus Bangor should be a good one. Let's, uh, let's go to some baseball now, and we will head to Husson. After dropping one to the University of Southern Maine on Tuesday, the Eagles had one more non-conference tune-up before NAC play begins against Umpy. Husson also trying for their first home win of the year against the Owls. We're going to start in the first inning. Akira Warren at bat for Husson. He rips a grounder into left field. Kobe Rogerson is going to round third. He's going to come in to score. That makes it one to nothing. Husson early to the fifth now. Tyler Michaud at home at the plate. That one gets through the hole. Colin Marshall scores and Warren follows. Four to nothing. Eagles in the first, but. Umpy would crawl back into it. 5-3 to three in the seventh. Peyton Jones with the bases loaded. Hits it hard towards short. That allows Joey Lippo to score. It's a one-run ball game. But a couple of batters later, Anthony Searles trying to drive home the tying run. Tanner Evans scoops this slow roller. He's going to hurl it to first. They, he is out to end the inning, and Husson would hold on. They win 6-4. Let's stay with some baseball now. The Sea Dogs opened up the doors to Hadlock Field and painted the lines for their opening day, hosting the Binghamton Rumble Ponies. On the mound was Red Sox pitcher Garrett Whitlock making a rehab start. Whitlock went six innings, allowing just one hit and striking out eight. That one hit being a home run in the fifth inning. And in the stands, fans filled up the stadium for the first time this year. And with minor league baseball, the experience in the stands and as a fan is really what it's all about. You've been waiting for a season to start for a while in pretty much any sport, and it's nice for it to finally start happening. Absolutely. You got your winter hat on, though. It's kind of baseball weather <laughs> yeah. in the Northeast, yeah. though, right? Yeah. My daughter got, a, got these tickets for Christmas for us because we've been coming here for so many years. All right, let's stay on the diamond here. We will just kick it over to Detroit. Red Sox in action on Thursday, hoping to avoid dropping four in a row. They're playing the Tigers, and it's sale day for those who celebrate. Looking for a better start than last time out. Bottom of the second, he serves up the sinker to Jake Rogers. Rogers gets all of that ball. That's over the left field fence, and it's 2 to nothing Detroit early. 3-1 to one now. Raffi Devers at the dish. He gets a high fastball. You can't really throw that pitch to Raffi. He takes this one. Oppo Taco. That one is gone. Socks within a run. And here comes Raffi again in the sixth. He absolutely unloads on this pitch. That's going to go off the wall in dead center. Alex Verdugo hustles around to score. That ties the game. A few batters later, here's Adam Duvall. He's had a heck of a start to his Sox career, and he keeps it going. Belts this one. That is a three-run shot to make it 6-3. to three. The Sox go on to win by that score. Sale gets his first W of the season. Red Sox are now 3-4. and four. Always good news when the Sox get a win. That's all the time we have for sports. Be right back after the break. It's your journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Tucson with America's best warranty. Get 0% APR financing for 48 months on the 2023 Hyundai Tucson. Visit your local Hyundai dealer today. 
Did you know that an alpaca item is the most wish-listed gift idea? Stop searching for that perfect gift and start shopping for it at the Blue Alpaca in Belfast. It doesn't matter who's on your gift list, the Blue Alpaca has something for everyone with an incredible selection of alpaca socks, hats, sweaters, even stuffed animals and more. Shop in-store or online and take advantage of their free nationwide shipping. Too much to choose from? Don't worry, the Blue Alpaca also offers gift cards. The Blue Alpaca, feel the difference. One. Want the speed to finally defeat your mortal enemy? Oh, there he is! I won! Only Spectrum gives you speed boost for the fastest wireless speeds in the palm of your hand. Get game changing speed with Speed Boost only with Spectrum One. From the land to the sea. Chase's Family Restaurant is the place to be. Are you looking for a place to unwind after a long day? Then come check out our Hideaway Lounge. With a bar that's both upbeat and laid back. And it's the perfect atmosphere for anyone who wants to unwind after work. Or kick it up for the weekend with daily drink specials and a full dinner menu. You can fill up on a good time any night of the week. Thank you for being a part of our family. Here at Chase's Family Restaurant. Moms and dads work hard to keep their babies healthy with lots of love, healthy foods, keeping clean, physical activity, and vaccination, a key piece of the puzzle. Nothing protects babies better from 14 serious diseases by age two. For more reasons to vaccinate, talk to your child's doctor or go to cdc.gov slash vaccines slash parents. It's your journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Santa Fe with America's best warranty. Get 0% APR financing for 48 months on the 2023 Hyundai Santa Fe. Visit your local Hyundai dealer today. You just wait around a minute, something awful is bound to happen. You saved me. That's what we're here for. 911 Lone Star, Tuesday on Fox. Walmart says it expects about two-thirds of its stores to be serviced by automation by the end of 2026. The retail giant says it plans to move roughly 55% of packages processed through its fulfillment centers to automated facilities. Walmart hopes the changes will lead to less physical labor for its workers, reducing costs. The announcement comes after the company announced plans to lay off more than 2,000 warehouse workers. Well, finally tonight, and not everyone is excited about Subway's new Easter-themed sandwich. And I got to tell you, after reading this, I'm not either. The chain is teaming up with Cat. The chain is teaming up with Cadbury for a limited edition chocolate sandwich, which features the famous cream egg. The bizarre concoction will be given away for free on Good Friday at select Subway restaurants. But get this, Subway restaurants in the UK. Some people are already weighing in, calling it, quote, absolutely disgusting. I'm just glad that it's not really being offered here. Here. Yeah. Mm, maybe wanna... not. Anyway, <laughs> good night. Good night, everyone. <laughs> For more local news coverage, switch over to our sister station, ABC7, right now for ABC7 News at 11. Maine's number one Kia dealer, Vans. What did she say to you? You have to say anything. I mean, she said she's scared. She said she loved me. Just a few days ago, Renner sent us a new video, another measure of his determination, vowing the next time you see him on a red carpet, he wants to be walking. I've lost a lot of flesh and bone in this experience, but I've been refueled and refilled with love and titanium. <laughs> and uh, that's going to either be a song or an epitaph. I'm not sure what it's going to be. Or a recipe for dessert and I love and titanium. <laughs> okay.